and free on all platforms. Disrupt a day at the beach. A young girl attacked by a coyote on Huntington Beach in California. A surf cam caught the attack on camera. At least 15 seconds went by before the girl was able to scramble to safety. An American life lost in Ukraine. 22 year old former Marine working for a private military contractor is killed fighting alongside Ukrainian forces. Russia once again escalating attacks on Kyiv, raining missiles on the capital. And after weeks of discussion, the European Union is prepared to begin a phased embargo against Russian oil and gas. ABC's Ian Panel is in Kyiv tonight. A sweeping abortion ban in Oklahoma, modeled after Texas his controversial law that's now before the Supreme Court. The bill would restrict abortions before most women even know they're pregnant. Another would make performing abortions a felony. The legal challenges piling up. Speeding up the process to get vaccines for children under five as soon as possible. The FDA says it will discuss Moderna's vaccine without waiting for Pfizer's data. The wait becoming painful for parents across the country as masks come off without their kids being vaccinated. The fight to save the rhinos. Poachers in South Africa are targeting these beautiful animals for their horns. Teams are now taking extreme measures to keep this keystone species safe and alive. Satire meets important subjects. Comedian Z-Way marries the two together in her talk show. I sit down with the host about what inspired the series that grew from social media. That was the genesis of the show, just having really uncomfortable conversations on my life. And never too old to hit the road. Today, Lester turns 100 years old, and tomorrow he'll run a 100-meter dash in one of the country's most popular races. It seems like it would be somewhat novel if I can get out there and, and really perform. Well, good evening. I'm Trevor Alt in for Lindsay Davis. Thank you so much for streaming with us. We begin tonight with news of a former U.S. Marine killed in Ukraine trying to help the Ukrainians fight the Russians. Willie Joseph Cancel was a private contractor there in Ukraine. His wife and young son back in Tennessee. His wife says he went there to help people. President Biden tonight is lamenting that he leaves a son behind. And the U.S. is warning Americans not to go overseas to help. As in Kyiv, after a week of quiet, five missiles striking overnight on the heels of President Zelensky's meeting there with the U.N. Secretary General. And as American officials say Russia's war in eastern Ukraine is not going as planned, tonight the European Union is reportedly preparing to phase out their use of Russian oil because the money they pay for that oil is funding Putin's war. And tonight we have yet another heartbreaking update from the besieged city of Mariupol. Ian Panel leads us off once again from Kyiv. Tonight, a Pentagon plea to Russia to tamp down the nuclear saber rattling after threats from the Kremlin. We urge Russia uh, to stop uh, escalating the rhetoric uh, uh, with respect to nuclear weapons and do the right thing. Is end the war today. Kirby appearing to choke up as he talked about Vladimir Putin's atrocities in Ukraine. It's difficult to look at the... Sorry. It's difficult to look at some of the images and imagine that any well-thinking, serious, mature leader would do that. Russia's war has not gone to plan. Having failed to take the capital, Kyiv, a senior U.S. defense official assessing they're now having trouble with their offensive in the east and are behind schedule by at least several days, describing it as a potential knife fight. And tonight, the first American civilian fighting alongside Ukrainian troops has died. Former U.S. Marine Willie Joseph Cancel. His wife confirming his death to ABC News, saying in a statement, he went there wanting to help people. He had always felt that that was his main mission in life, adding, my husband was very brave and a hero. The 22-year-old had been working with a military contractor in Ukraine and was a full-time correction officer in Tennessee. He leaves behind his wife and young son. 
Tonight, new video of that missile strike on Kyiv late Thursday. Videos online showing the moment Russian missiles rained down, destroying a residential building, killing prominent Ukrainian journalist Vera Hirich. Seen here in a selfie video last month on the streets of Kyiv. These latest strikes coming just over an hour after President Zelensky met with United Nations Secretary General Antonio Guterres. Artem Chaus was in his apartment when the first missile struck and saw the next attack incoming. Wow, so you saw two missiles come in. Yes. I can't imagine how terrifying that must be. No, yes, yes, like a man. In Mariupol, new attempts to rescue civilians trapped in that massive steel plant failing. We contacted the far-right Azov Battalion, who are fighting alongside government forces trapped in that besieged bunker with hundreds of civilians. ABC News couldn't verify this video's authenticity. Unable to speak to them directly, we sent questions about the conditions there. This place was not intended for a living. Residents trapped in the city for weeks, like 71-year-old Vitaly Kudasov, describe the hell of daily life. It was a massacre, he says. Shells, rounds, scary things, but we endured. Victoria Nikolaeva says simply, it's like when they show you the last days of the planet. We were thinking, this is it. And Ian Panel joins us tonight once again from Kyiv. And Ian, late today we heard from President Biden reacting to the death of that former U.S. Marine. What did he have to say? Yeah, that's right, Trevor. I mean, the president calling the death of American Willie Joseph cancel very sad. U.S. officials also doubling down tonight, urging Americans once again not to travel to the country as attacks by Russia in the east and the south of Ukraine start to ramp up. Trevor? Ian, Ian Panel for us tonight. Thank you. And back here at home, the governor of Oklahoma is expected to sign the second of two new anti-abortion laws, effectively ending nearly all abortions in that state. And this is, of course, the latest Republican-led state to impose strict limits. It's forcing women to travel out of state to seek services. As ABC's Rachel Scott reports, this comes as the Supreme Court now prepares to rule in a case that could overturn Roe v. Wade. Tonight, one of the most restrictive abortion bills in the nation now on the desk of Oklahoma's governor, awaiting his signature. It bans abortion after six weeks, before many women even know they're pregnant. This will not save just one life. This will save many, many lives. It has been proven so in Texas. It will be so here in Oklahoma. It's modeled after that restrictive law in Texas, deputizing everyday citizens to file lawsuits against anyone they say aids or abets an abortion. The reward, at least $10,000. This bill is incredibly intrusive, it reduces individuals' freedoms, and it's just plain wrong. Since the Texas law passed, a surging number of women from that state have traveled to Oklahoma to get an abortion, a 2,500% increase, according to Planned Parenthood. But soon, Oklahoma won't be an option either. It joins a number of mostly southern states that recently imposed new restrictions on access to abortion, forcing women to travel even further to get the procedure. You're putting people in a terrible position where they have to choose between their job, caring for their children, and getting the health care that they need. But in Oklahoma, Republican lawmakers I spoke with unmoved. What is your message to women who say, this should be my choice? Who say they should have the decision, they should have the choice to decide what they want to do with their own health. I think there's unique DNA. I think it's a unique living human being in the womb. And so I believe that the decision over your health uh, is tremendous. The de decision on someone else's health, uh, I think, is different. The bill will go into effect immediately after the governor signs it all but stopping abortions in the state. Then in August, an even tougher bill will go into effect, outlawing abortions entirely in Oklahoma, except to save the life of a woman in a medical emergency. And Rachel Scott joins us now from Washington. Of course, Rachel, we can't forget that as uh, these red states continue to pass these laws with restrictions on abortion, they're doing that because at least right now, they cannot outright ban it. But we know this is all happening as we're awaiting the Supreme Court's ruling in a case that actually could overturn Roe v. Wade. 
Yeah, this is a highly anticipated Supreme Court decision that is expected early this summer that could in fact determine the future of Roe versus Wade. I can tell you that both sides are eagerly anticipating this, but a lot of Republican states, they are not waiting here. They say they will continue to pass these bills because they want to make abortions outlawed across the country. And tonight, abortion advocates say that we could be in the final days of reproductive freedom in this country. Trev? Oklahoma, not the first state, certainly won't be the last. Rachel Scott, thank you. To the, to the pandemic now, and the FDA has announced it will hold three meetings in June to discuss vaccines for young children. It's been nearly a year and a half since the first adult doses of the COVID vaccine were administered. But vaccines are, of course, still not yet approved for children under five. ABC's Ariel Reshef has the latest on the timeline. For millions of parents of children under five, tonight a potential timeline for the FDA's review of the Pfizer and Moderna vaccines. An advisory panel is now planning to meet on June 8th, 21st and 22nd, with authorization expected sometime that month. With COVID cases up 44% among children, many parents say they want a decision soon. It's frustrating to watch the numbers go up and to say, well, there might be another delay. We're just going to wait a little longer. We've waited so long. We can't wait any longer. But Dr. Anthony Fauci today trying to reassure the public that the FDA is studying the data as quickly as it comes in. The FDA is not delaying anything. The FDA needs the information, not all of which has been presented to them yet, to make a determination. And I think there's a misinterpretation that they're holding on to data that they should be moving on. That's not the case at all. It comes as parents are weighing the evidence, too. The Moderna vaccine was found to be 37 to 51 percent effective against infection in kids under six. But doctors stress those numbers were similar in adults during the Omicron surge. More importantly, they say data suggests the vaccine will cut the risk of severe illness. We should be realistic and let parents know that the goal of this vaccine is to prevent severe illness and hospitalization, not necessarily to prevent every single COVID-19 infection or those mild cases. And Ariel joins us now. Ariel, that FDA panel meeting that's scheduled for June, that's also going to be discussing a wider rollout of boosters. I know we just heard from Dr. Fauci. He says this could actually also include maybe an updated vaccine for more than one variant as this thing continues to evolve. That's right, Trevor. On June 28th, the FDA panel will also discuss a potential new vaccine as well as a booster campaign for the fall. Dr. Fauci today saying that he hopes that Americans will have access to a longer lasting vaccine so they don't have to get a booster every four months. Trevor. That could go a long way convincing people to keep showing up for those boosters. Ariel Reshef, thank you. Next tonight, to the growing blowback after the release of a trove of evidence in the deadly shooting on set of the movie Rust, the family of slain cinematographer Helena Hutchins is angered at the release of body cam video showing her final moments as she fought for her life. Kaylee Hartung reports. This is a crime scene. Tonight, growing outrage over authorities' handling of the deadly Rust shooting investigation. A lawyer for the film's armor, Hannah Gutierrez Reed, calling the release of a massive trove of evidence ill conceived and unnecessary, leading to an erroneous implication. There was uh, several text messages and emails in reference to the use of possible um, live rounds on a different movie set. Uh, that's concerning. Following this appearance on Good Morning America, Gutierrez Reed's lawyer demanding the Santa Fe County Sheriff amend or retract his statements that they say has led some to conclude the armor brought live rounds on an earlier set as well as Russ. So here's the box that I got them out of. Okay. The film's weapons and ammunition provider describing controversial text messages Gutierrez Reed sent him months before the Russ shooting while she was working on another film. She wanted to shoot live ammo out of the guns, the TV movie guns, and I said no way, obviously. But Gutierrez Reed's lawyer saying Hannah has never brought live rounds on any movie set, nor has she ever fired any live rounds on any set on which she's worked, including the Russ set. And also within the hours of video released, officers' body cam showing the rush to try to save Helena Hutchins' life. Her family condemning the sheriff's decision, saying the damage your office has done is irreparable. Tonight, how those live rounds got on set is still a mystery, as the sheriff takes heat over their initial response to the crime scene. We accept the critiques. If you don't go back and, and uh, look at, at, uh, at how you can do things better, then, uh, then we're not doing the best job that we can. 
That's Kaylee Hartung reporting. Now to the developing news out of Florida tonight where three Miami-Dade correctional officers are charged in the beating death of an inmate. That inmate was found dead in a van while being transferred to another facility. And tonight, newly released surveillance video is shedding light on this case. Here's ABC's Elwin Lopez. Tonight, disturbing new surveillance video shows the moments before prosecutors say a South Florida inmate was beaten to death by several corrections officers. That inmate, Ronald Gene Ingram, seen walking on his own escorted by guards inside Dade Correctional Facility. But then exterior cameras show officers carrying him into a transport van, legs dragging and head slumped. It wasn't until that transport van made a stop that they found the inmate dead. His numerous broken ribs had a punctured right lung that caused extensive internal bleeding, resulting in his death. Today, a judge has denied bond to Christopher Rowland, Kirk Walton, and Ronald Connor, those officers now facing murder charges. Officials say the February incident began when Ingram allegedly threw urine at one of the officers. He was serving life in prison for murder and set to be transferred to another facility. Regardless of the crime, inmates that come in our system have a right to, to do their time free from victimization and, and abuse, and we failed in this case. Elwin Lopez, thank you. Next tonight, millions of Americans are in the path of dangerous weather. A tornado watch in parts of the heartland, and that's happening as severe weather's moving through the Midwest. And then in the West, there's critical fire danger. So let's get to ABC's senior meteorologist, Rob Marciano, tracking all of it for us. Rob, good evening. Hi, Trevor. This is all the same system. It's becoming expansive. It's becoming powerful uh, with a lot of hazards. Tornadoes, as you mentioned, probably being the most dangerous one. So we'll start with that. We've got at least three states now that are under tornado watches right in Tornado Alley, Nebraska, Kansas, uh, through Oklahoma City, down to the Texas border. Wind all around this thing. And those storms, are, as you can see on the radar, are popping up. In the northern flank, we got flood watches in the Dakotas. This is an area that saw the blizzard just last week. All right, this thing spins up towards uh, through Minnesota tomorrow. The severe weather threat pushes into Milwaukee, Chicago, down through Indiana and Illinois, into the heartland. Probably not as severe as tonight, but certainly wind damage and the possibility of tornadoes through the afternoon and evening tomorrow. Now, the southern flank of this thing is very windy again, and then we have that ongoing drought. So all, nearly all of New Mexico through the high plains under a, a extreme critical fire danger tonight for strong winds, very dry fuels, and any new fire starts with those uh, very strong winds will uh, stoke those flames and drive those, those fires tonight. So dangerous night ahead for many. And of course, the, the drought is ongoing and exceptional in some spots of New Mexico and Texas. So that's a problem. And we're getting into the dry season so that we're not looking for a whole lot of help here in the coming months. As far as the temperatures are concerned, the northeast and the, the, the northeastern really quarter of the country has been under really cold conditions lately. <clears throat> that trend, although we'll see some warming, uh, will continue, it looks like, into the first week of May. So don't put away the heavy jackets just yet. Trevor? All right. We're getting into that more dangerous time of year. Rob, thank you. You bet. And when we come back, the investigation now underway following a shooting near a Chicago baseball field that was captured on a live stream. Plus, as we enter the summer travel season, we have the new warnings about short-term rentals. But first up next, our in-depth look at the poaching of rhino. It's pushing them closer to the brink of extinction. We're going to tell you the radical idea that some hope will make them less valuable to poachers and in turn help save the species. That's next. With so much at stake, so much on the line, more Americans turn here than any place else. ABC News, World News Tonight with David Muir, America's number one most watched newscast, now streaming on ABC News Live. It was a scary time in the 70s. You had multiple bodies showing up in Los Angeles. There were so many murders happening. You had to have a name for it, serial killer. There was a human head in there. This was premeditated evil. We have this clock. This person is going to do this again. It's me against the killer. Who's going to win? We'll see who laughs last. What came next was unlike anything they had ever seen. Admit it. These days, what you need to know seems to change just about every day. What is it that you really want to know, need to know? To help you not just get through your day, but to make the most of it. Feel smarter. Feel better. Feel happier. Well, how about a third hour of Good Morning America? 
GMA3, what you need to know. Now streaming on ABC News Live. It's all about you. The hottest news in daytime are happening right here. We talk about things on this show that people don't talk about. That I can't wait to see. Honest takes from strong women. We need all hands on deck and we need it right now. This is the time to speak out. Unafraid to get real. We stick by our points of view. We're all seeing it differently and that's the beauty of The View. And that's why the most watched number one daytime talk show is The View. Now streaming on ABC News Live. Is that the gun? That's not the gun. What is it? I won't ask you again then. Are you a Nazi? <laughs> the deeper you go into the black market, you put people to your life like this. The darker it gets. Why hasn't anyone come out and spoken? It's about the money, that's all we do. Trafficked. New episodes Wednesdays at 9 on National Geographic. Take America's number one news with you anywhere you go, anytime, free. Download the ABC News app now. Breaking news, exclusives, 24-7. There for you with one touch. The ABC News app. Download it now. America's number one news, ABC News. Most watched, most trusted, and streaming live to you anytime, anywhere, and free. This is ABC News Live, America's number one streaming news, free to you 24-7. Watch America's number one news whenever you want it, wherever you are, anytime. ABC News Live, streaming live and free on all platforms. Next tonight, the fight to save the rhinos in South Africa. Poachers have been killing them one by one for their horns. Our chief national correspondent, Matt Gutman, reports from Kruger National Park on the drastic measures the teams are now taking to try to keep this majestic species safe. We are running through the South African bush, that helicopter thundering overhead. Somewhere in the bush here is where they mobilized that rhino. We're gonna follow the helicopter there. There it is. And then we see her. Here at the Kruger National Park in South Africa, 80% of the rhino population has been killed by poachers in less than a decade. Just moments earlier, veterinarian Peter Bass guarded this female rhino from a helicopter. He's not poaching, he's trying to save this mega herbivore. And if you didn't dehorn this animal, what would be her fate? Well, that puts her at high risk of being poached. Because obviously the poachers, the bigger the horns, the more return they get on their, the, the risks they take trying to, to, to poach her. So she's a high risk animal like this with a horn. In markets in China and Vietnam, rhino horn fetches about $10,000 a pound, with some believing it's an aphrodisiac. And is she gonna suffer not having this horn? So it's a bit like getting your nails cut. They remove the horn and begin the task of tagging this animal. The team's done this hundreds of times, and now, without her horn, the rhino is less vulnerable to poachers. Moments later, she's back on her feet. These are drastic measures, but with rhinos facing possible extinction within five to ten years, conservationists say they are necessary. We we're trying our best. And Tanika Golele is the head ranger of the southern section of the park. She says dehorning has stopped poaching in her region the past month. So what happens when you hear about poaching and you hear another rhino is killed and another rhino is killed? It pains my heart. It pains my heart because it, it makes me uh, feel that there's a lot to be done in our country. People must understand that these animals it's, they've got value into the society. Kruger's chief pilot, David Similani, has seen hundreds of rhino dehornings and deaths. We're at this stage because we are on the brink of failure. Um, and this is the last, the last thing that we can do to try and, and to, uh, save the species. Because a dead rhino like that is a crime scene. A dead rhino like that is a crime scene. It's a particular species in South Africa. Most of the time, the only witnesses to the crime are baby rhinos orphaned by those poachers. David's most delicate missions, 
flying those calves to the sanctuary. With this chopper, you've actually taken orphan calves to care yeah, for a yeah. while. We have taken orphan calves to care for a while. If they're, if they're big enough to fit in the back here, we, up, we lift the seats up, we lie them flat there. Huh. It takes a good, good six men to be able to put it in the back. Care for Wild, founded by Petronel Nuvot, is the rhino sanctuary where those 300-pound babies are most often airlifted. It has been home to over 100 orphan rhinos whose parents were killed by poachers. It sounds like it's only getting worse, like you're getting more and more orphan rhinos. Yeah, if I look back uh, over the last 10 years, it was a massive shock. I would say the worst in my lifetime, from my time in the Endangered Species Protection Unit, where I was a captain in the police, mm. uh, I've never seen anything like that. Petronelle and her team hand-reared these animals with trial and error. They spent most of their days preparing milk, weighing the animals, taking baby zebras like Mujaji and reluctant rhino calves like Daisy for walks. The incredible thing about these rhinos is that they really do need their mother's milk. And when they're orphans this age, and even though they're fed every two hours, they still can't get the nutrition they need. And just three months ago, what Petronelle calls a miracle happened here. A pair of very special rhinos. And so this is, this is the miracle baby. This is the miracle baby. They're the first of a kind. Winter becoming the first ever orphaned rhino to mate with another orphan and bear a calf. Hi, Blizzy. Zoologists didn't think it was possible. But three months ago, little Blizzy was born. Is that incredible that you have a, a, a mother that was so wounded, so maimed and traumatized, and you have this, this perfect baby? That's, every time I see her, it's this new start for rhinos. Um, mm. For us in the world, if you ask, why do we have to conserve rhino? Why is rhino important? Do you feel this? Farther down the track, there was something else Petronelle wanted to show us. This big fella. That's the dad. So this is so interesting that out of all these rhinos, that's... He's really the hero right now of He's the hero. this sanctuary. And he was also one of the orphans that came in. Storm, as he's called, was one of those rhinos airlifted to care for wild. At that point, science didn't know whether a rhino could learn rhino behavior without other rhino adults. The miracle is that he had no parents to teach him how to be a bull rhino. No. no. He had nature, and, and it worked. It worked better than anyone thought. And Petronelle now hoping there could be more miracle babies along the way. And these two are females that we think is also pregnant with his uh, babies. So it went from no orphans ever having babies to now possibly four in a short period of time. These births giving conservation is something they had not expected in their battle against poachers. Hope for the future of this species. Our thanks to Matt Gutman for that report. And still ahead here on Prime, the latest on Trevor Reed. Now that he's back on U.S. soil, we have the details of his recovery and what's next for him. And while the world begins to accept living with COVID, China locks down its financial epicenter. Our in-depth look at the situation in Shanghai. And we take a look at the winners from the NFL draft so far by the numbers. But first, our tweet of the day. This is from Katmai National Park in Alaska. They say they are barely hanging on into the weekend. I've been there too, buddy. We'll be right back. The deeper you go into the black markets, the darker it gets. Traffic Wednesdays at 9 on National Geographic. Right now, with so much at stake, Sunday mornings, this is the place. Taking on all the tough questions, straightforward reporting, no spin, no hype, no bull. Thank you for making ABC's This Week with George Stephanopoulos, the number one Sunday morning news show versus the competition. Welcome to This Week. It was a scary time in the 70s. You had multiple bodies showing up in Los Angeles. There were so many murders happening. You had to have a name for it, serial killer. There was a human head in there. This was premeditated evil. You have this clock. This person is going to do this again. It's me against the killer. Who's going to win? We'll see who laughs last. What came next was unlike anything they had ever seen. Is that the gun? That's not the gun. What is it? 
I won't ask you again then. Are you an IT? <laughs> the deeper you go into the black market, you could be putting your life at risk. The darker it gets. Why hasn't anyone come out and spoken? To where the money not all good. Trafficked. New episodes Wednesdays at 9 on National Geographic. These days, with so much going on, it's hard to keep up. While others are recapping yesterday's headlines, we're bringing you the right now. This is the busy border crossing. Steel barricades, another strike. The right now look at the day ahead, how it affects you and your family. Record high gas prices. The threat of cyber warfare. Is peace possible? World News Now beginning at 2 a.m. Eastern, followed by America This Morning. America's number one early morning news. Streaming here on ABC News Live. Take America's number one news with you anywhere you go, anytime, free. Download the ABC News app now. Breaking news, exclusives, 24-7. There for you with one touch. The ABC News app. Download it now. I risked my life. If I was caught, they would have put a bullet in my head. That would have been one of the most deadly acts of domestic terrorism ever in the United States. He put himself in jeopardy for us. Welcome back. We may be months from the start of the football season, but we are in the midst of Christmas for diehard football fans with the NFL draft taking place all weekend in Las Vegas. And we had a wild first round already in the book. So let's take a look by the numbers. Five, the first five picks in this year's draft were all defensive players. Georgia's Trayvon Walker led the way at the first overall pick. Walker, of course, helped snap the Georgia Bulldogs 42 year championship drought earlier this year. He made Alabama quarterback Bryce Young's life miserable during the game. In fact, in total, Georgia had five defenders selected in round one. That's the most defensive players ever taken from the same school in the first round. Meanwhile, one, that is how few quarterbacks were taken in the first round. The last time that happened was back in 2013. And at the same time, nine is the amount of trades last night. That's the most in the first round in 12 years. And there were also uh, some news beyond people getting drafted. Pro bowler A.J. Brown got a $100 million contract from his new team, the Philadelphia Eagles they traded a first round pick to acquire him from the Tennessee Titans and one final note pertaining to the 24th overall pick you can file this away in the be careful what you tweet category Dallas Cowboys reporter Bob Sturm tweeted yesterday morning he would submit his retirement papers if the team drafted Tulsa offensive lineman Tyler Smith and sure enough they selected number 56 Tyler Smith with their pick now, it does not appear that Sturm is actually going to be retiring, but there's a lesson in there for all of us. The NFL draft concludes tomorrow. And we still have a ton to get to here on Prime this evening. We'll tell you why tennis legend Boris Becker was just sentenced to prison. Plus, our conversation with the TV host making us laugh, but also challenging America to feel a little bit uncomfortable for once. And meet the 100-year-old about to run the 100-yard dash. But first, a look at our top trending stories on abcnews.com. With so much at stake in our world right now, we wanted to thank you for your trust and for making ABC News America's number one news. And thank you for making ABC News Live America's number one streaming news. Now streaming on ABC News Live 2020. True crime, cinematic, real life drama, stunning, the unthinkable. Follow the clues, the hunt, true crime 2020. Now streaming on ABC News Live. National parks are incredibly safe places. A crime will happen. My wife had fallen in really critical condition. At that time, I thought it was just a tragic accident. There's still a lot of questions we need to ask. There were small things that didn't totally add up. This is two lives for Harold that have died now. I was shocked. Something's not right. Admit it. These days, what you need to know seems to change just about every day. What is it that you really want to know, need to know? To help you not just get through your day, but to make the most of it. Feel smarter. Feel better. Feel happier. Well, how about a third hour of Good Morning America? GMA3, what you need to know. 
now streaming on ABC News Live. It's all about you. I know what happened, and I'm not guilty. Why the fascination with criminal trials? Figure out what's really out there. She revealed she had murdered his family. I know in my heart that he did this. It's the time of suspicion. The ending's really tough. You don't know whether truth is going to be difficult to find unless you try to find it. America's number one news, ABC News. Most watched, most trusted, and streaming live to you anytime, anywhere, and free. This is ABC News Live, America's number one streaming news. Free to you 24-7. Watch America's number one news whenever you want it, wherever you are, anytime. ABC News Live, streaming live and free on all platforms. The State Department with an urgent warning to Americans to stay out of Ukraine. The first American killed while fighting in Ukraine, 22-year-old Willie Cancel of Tennessee, died Monday. His wife, Brittany, confirming with ABC News overnight, saying her husband was eager to volunteer. Cancel is a former Marine and was working with a private military contracting company. Amid the fighting in the east, Russia striking Ukraine's capital, Kyiv, yesterday. Ukrainian officials say five Russian missiles were launched at the capital city, with two of them hitting their targets, including that apartment. You might not need as much sleep as you might think. If you're middle-aged or older, a new study suggests you should get seven hours of sleep a night, but you probably don't need much more. In this case, middle-aged means being between the ages of 38 and 73. Researchers from Great Britain and China examined data from a half a million adults in that age group. Those who got seven hours had better cognitive function than those who got more or less. Major League Baseball has announced a 324-game suspension for Los Angeles Dodgers pitcher Trevor Bauer, the equivalent of two full seasons, and by far the most severe punishment handed out under the sport's domestic violence policy. Bauer was accused of sexual assault by a San Diego woman who requested a restraining order and essentially alleged that he took consensual rough sex too far over the course of two encounters last April and May. An L.A. judge denied the woman a permanent restraining order in August, and the L.A. County District Attorney's Office declined to file criminal charges in February. But MLB also looked into at least one other incident of alleged sexual assault with a woman from Ohio. Bauer promptly released a statement saying, In the strongest possible terms, I deny committing any violation of the league's domestic violence and sexual assault policy. He announced he was appealing the suspension, becoming the first player to appeal punishment through MLB's domestic violence policy. Finding a place to live can be stressful, even more so when you find out you've been scammed. Ashley Rourke of Berkeley, Michigan, talking to her affiliate WXYZ, telling them she lost $930 trying to rent this house. She responded to an online listing, and she didn't suspect anything suspicious. People were quick to respond. The photos were all really nice. She says she drove by the home and talked on the phone with someone claiming to be a lawyer representing the owner, saying he had to go out of town soon. So he needed the first month's rent and security deposit to be sent quickly. Experts say scammers often advertise rentals that don't exist or aren't actually available, all to trick people into transferring money to them. Signs of a scam? The person asks for money before you see the house or sign a lease. They won't meet you in person. Or they say you can't see the inside of the house. Tennis legend Boris Becker has been sentenced to two and a half years in a British prison for bankruptcy offenses. Becker won six major titles in his career. It's the holiest month of the year for over a billion Muslims honoring Ramadan. They fast daily from dawn until dusk, one of the five pillars of Islam. Ramadan isn't just fasting in the sense that you're fasting from food and drinking. It's fasting from anything that isn't helping you be a better person. Then when the sun sets for the day, it's all about breaking that fast together, enjoying food and community into the night, and it can be for a good cause. In celebration of this holiest of months, Hassan Shami started the Ramadan Sahur Festival, a massive overnight festival of food. 
People from Detroit to all across the country attend, some waiting nearly an hour for their favorite foods. Well, this week, Dr. Anthony Fauci declared the acute phase of the pandemic was over here in the United States. But overseas in China, the country's zero COVID policy is taking an incredible toll in Shanghai. Many of the city's 25 million residents have been stuck in their homes for more than a month now, and the ripple effects of a country on lockdown extend far beyond China's borders. Britt Clement reports. <laughs> This is not March 2020. This is my current bed place. And uh, as you can see, you have a um, camping style. This is not the height of the pandemic. Everyone is at very uh, close contact with each other. And there's absolutely no privacy. This is China today. The haunting specter of a very real crisis that has once again sent millions across this country into their homes or trapped into quarantine. Around the world, countries are slowly emerging from the COVID-19 pandemic two years after its onset. Masks will be optional this evening for all crew and passengers as well. So it is cause to celebrate, but... I don't see us going back into any more really very restrict kinds of restrictions. But in parts of mainland China, there is an extreme lockdown, while the rest of the world braces for the economic impact. China is part of all of our global supply chains. And so uh, they're being disrupted. In Shanghai, China's biggest city, many of the city's 25 million residents have been stuck in their homes for more than a month. Measures taken by the Chinese government to quell the surge of COVID-19 cases. Food and medical supplies becoming a concern for some here. I'm angry, but uh, I have no choice, actually. I have no power to use. Even I'm angry, but I'm here. I, I don't have any right to do something. One resident in Shanghai, Kenny, has been holed up in her apartment since March, with her two children learning remotely. I cannot cook because we have nothing to cook. I have only instant noodles left. <laughs> Your daughter's telling right. you she's hungry. Right. How are you coping? Actually, I feel very disappointed and depressed. Nobody cares. After the testing, Kenny's faith in local authorities now truly tested. I don't believe in go our government anymore. Zero COVID. That's long been the MO of the Chinese government, with extreme measures taken to reach that endpoint. What it required was a system of social control that was much more invasive, expansive than anything that most other countries would be able to carry out. Susan Shirk is an expert on Chinese politics and a former State Department official. What it really means is, first, massive PCR testing, uh, and then contact tracing using technology, social media, then aggressive quarantining. China saw some of the first surges of the pandemic in early 2020. But nationwide lockdowns, testing and surveillance led the country to reporting some of the lowest levels relative to its population over the last two years. With each new variant, maintaining zero COVID has become more difficult for China. They're still treating it as if it is a really deadly disease with very draconian methods. As the lockdowns continue, so too do the frustrations. With some finding ways to protest the lockdown. While the number of infections are rising, the official death toll is comparatively low. In Shanghai, there have been nearly 300 deaths from more than half a million infections since the lockdown began. My goal even now is to create awareness about this whole situation here in Shanghai right now. But I do hope that it's going to make people think outside of China. Alessandro moved to China years ago to study and stayed. Dancing with my red coat, 
building a career in Shanghai's thriving music industry. He was recently released from an isolation facility after testing positive for COVID. Give us an outline of what that experience was like. Very close contact. A lot of coughing, a lot of spitting, no showers, lights turned on 24-7. It was playing games on my mind, for sure. For some, the lockdown has left a lasting economic impact. I've lost my freelance job uh, recently. Jamie is an American writer in Shanghai who recently lost her main freelance job on top of coping with the lockdown's loneliness. It's, it's a bit like Groundhog Day in a bad way. It's a bit surreal when I'm constantly in my bubble. Um, Physically, I'm not moving much, so um, my energy's been really low. It's been hard to focus. The economic disruption in China could just be the beginning. We should care because the disruption uh, of the supply chains, aggravating inflation, is going to make our economic lives more difficult too. The fear throughout China continues to spread. In Beijing, officials are stepping up enforcement and expanding mass testing in 11 of the city's 16 districts. Lines snaking around the block with residents waiting to get swabbed and supermarket shelves emptying. It'll be interesting to see if Beijing's approach shows a somewhat more flexible or different approach from Shanghai. Back in Shanghai, some are losing hope. For Alessandro, even after testing negative for COVID twice, he may have to once again go back into isolation after a recent positive test. I don't know when this is going to end, and there's nothing I can do about this. Next tonight, the recent release of Trevor Reed ended a nearly three-year ordeal. He had been sentenced to nine years in a Russian prison in July of 2020. He was finally freed after being exchanged for a Russian serving time here in the U.S. His family is, of course, overjoyed to have him back. And ABC Stephanie Ramos has more on Reed's first hours back on U.S. soil as other Americans are still being held in Russia. Former Marine Trevor Reed is recovering at a military hospital at Joint Base San Antonio in Texas. As we learn new details about his condition, the Reed family spokesman saying he is receiving care from a world-class Department of Defense team. Reed also being offered intensive psychological counseling and support. After spending nearly three years imprisoned in Russia on charges, he assaulted a police officer, an accusation he and the U.S. government insisted were false. Reed freed in a top secret prisoner swap seen in this video broadcast on Russian state TV. Congressman August Fluger there to greet Trevor on the tarmac in Texas early Thursday morning describing what he saw. Did he seem excited? Did he seem anxious? He was obviously very fatigued. Um, his spirit is incredible. He's a survivor. He's a fighter. Um, and there's obviously health concerns with, uh, with him. And, and I think that's one of the reasons that President Biden was convinced that we needed to get him back now. Senior Biden administration officials say discussions with the Russians intensified in recent weeks as Reed's health deteriorated with fears he may have contracted tuberculosis. As Reed recovers, pressure now growing on President Biden to help free the other Americans still imprisoned in Russia. Paul Whelan, also a former Marine, has been in Russian custody since 2018. He denies charges that he was a spy. In a statement, Whelan asking, why was I left behind? Why hasn't more been done to secure my release? I would say that we will continue to do everything possible to bring Paul Whelan home. Um, the president is focused on that. WNBA star Brittany Griner also in Russian custody since February after she was accused of going through an airport near Moscow with Hashim sheesh oil. Our thanks to Stephanie Ramos. Well, tonight, Dolly Parton is singing a different tune about the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame after first saying she hadn't earned the right to be nominated and that she thought the Hall of Fame was for the people in rock music. Dolly Parton has had a change of heart. In a new interview with NPR's Morning Edition, the country icon now says that she would indeed receive the honor if she's voted in. She said, I'll accept gracefully. I'll say thanks 
and accept that. Well, next tonight to our conversation with the unbelievably funny host with a truly singular take on the late night industry. I sat down with Z Way. She's the executive producer and the host of her very own show that finds our areas of discomfort and it drives straight into them. The second season of Z Way premieres Sunday on Showtime. Here's our conversation. What exactly does empowerment mean to you? I don't know what empowerment means. It's not every day no. that our bookers can land television's most iconic talk show host. So I really am truly humbled to get to sit and talk with you. Thank you. I love compliments, so this is already getting off to a great start. It's perfect, because I have a lot of them for the next eight minutes or so. Uh, I'm curious because I know uh, you've achieved basically the dream of every American under 30 of, I'm just going to go on Instagram Live over and over until people realize I'm a genius and give me my own show with my own name. I'm making empowering TV, and if you don't like it, then you're just sad, jealous, ugly and desperate yeah that did happen it <laughs> feels surreal when you describe it like that it doesn't feel like real life but that that's pretty much my story <laughs> season one already felt like a really big show to me season two's got twice the episodes bigger ideas for season two even is that even possible Bigger ideas, bigger guests. Yes, I mean, we we cast Amanda in a commercial sketch with Larry <laughs> Owens. I mean, you don't get bigger than that. She no. was in Hunger Games. And we have interviewed guests like Charlemagne the God and Chet Hanks and <laughs> Kalka Zamagul-Jakova. So it's a wide range of people, but all of them are iconic in their own way. We certainly know what it's like to book guests. We're fairly straightforward. Your show is so unique in that it aggressively traffics in discomfort. And obviously, like, everybody loves season one, but the guests are uncomfortable. I'm wondering if it, if, was it easier or harder to land people for season two? It was easier to the point where Charlemagne opens his interview by saying, um, I always wondered how you were going to book guests for season two and look at me here. <laughs> Honestly, like a lot of fun. We have in the Chet Hanks interview, you'll see like the crew is absolutely dying of laughter. I apologize. My sincerest apology. That was some white woman ignorance. Nah. I know you said after season one that to your knowledge, it didn't seem like any guest left mad at you. Is that still true? That's still true, to my knowledge, yeah. You must be the most charismatic person on the planet. Honestly, I'm just really present and an active listener, and people love to be listened to. And and that's that's kind of my thing. And that's so I, we make something. I love to think that me and my guests make really interesting, funny art together. Who do you think has more money, Asia or Africa? Oh, God. You cover topics that people would say... That's important. I don't really want to talk about it. I definitely don't want to joke about it. Why does CRT suck? The first episode of season two is called Critical Race Theory, yeah. which is, I think a lot of people would say, doesn't sound like a barrel of laughs. How do you find that balance, especially when so much of the show has to be improv with a guest? Well, I'm bo so I have been watching news all of my life, um, especially ABC's new ABC News with David Muir. And so, <laughs> I, honestly, and so with critical race theory in particular, I found that the discourse around it was sort of like unaware of what that term meant. And so I just approached it as someone who has no idea what the word means. And then it's just really fun. We're just trying to have fun. We're making people laugh. I'm trying to have fun. And so that shines through in the show, I think. The Z-Way on the show. Do you fully consider that a character? Is that just a version of yourself? It is like a hyperbolic, heightened version of myself. Imagine hanging out with that girl all the time. She has so many questions. Like, <laughs> let me live. I don't want to talk about politics. I don't want to talk about race. I want to talk about contouring. And so but that's kind of the fun of the character. She's always bringing it back to her one POV. And I think that that's kind of a testament to where we are in media. Do you find yourself in difficult or annoying situations leaning into her a little bit to get your way out of it? I mean, honestly, the show was inspired by a lifetime of people bringing up how many black friends to me, oh. friends they had to me unprompted. And I'm like, what? <laughs> we're at a Chili's. Why are, you, why are you talking about that? And so that was the genesis of the show, just having really uncomfortable conversations all my life. Do you find in situations like this where the roles are reversed, are people scared to talk to you because they're afraid that you might ask them some uncomfortable question? 
Yes, I, I, I don't know why you, the world perceives me as a sociopath who punches my guests in the face. I'm a lovely person. I'm a delight. I'm very polite as well. I'm uncomfortable. I mean, if you can win over Chet Hanks, who can't you win over? Would you say that, are you terrified of me? Where, where does it, where do I rank on the terrified? No, I don't think that, I wouldn't say that I was afraid, but I was thinking I should be prepared. I have a habit of taking control of interviews. I think it's the, the Pi Pisces sign Capricorn moon. That was what I was going to say. It's probably the Pisces sign Capricorn moon. Yes, 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 exactly. Like Elizabeth Taylor. I like to think of myself as the black version of her. What else can we tee up for season two? There's a wide range of people for every single taste and genre, and you get iconic quotes like, Alana Glazer talking about Yas Queen. So it's just, <laughs> it's gonna be really, really fun, and I recommend the show. Z-Way, this has been amazing. Thanks so much. Thank you so much. It was a pleasure talking to you, Trevor. And in the season two premiere of Z-Way is Sunday on Showtime. Next tonight, a New Jersey man is set to ride like the wind tomorrow in the 100-meter dash at the Penn Relays in Philadelphia. But this is no ordinary guy. That is because he just turned 100 years old today. WABC's Anthony Johnson has his amazing, inspiring story. Being a centenarian is quite an accomplishment, but to live to 100 and still be a competitive runner, well, that's something quite different. Meet Lester Wright, who has also been married to his lovely wife, Adele, for 80 years. Is it the perfect marriage? No. <laughs> but it has been a trifecta of fortune that has stood the test of time. We worked real hard, and then we played real hard. Lester Taylor has a history of surviving the worst and coming out on top. He served in World War II in a segregated unit whose function was burying the dead from the Battle of the Bulge and became a sergeant. Once home, he and his wife started their own dental lab. The business people in Long Branch said those people will never make it for six yeah, months and we made it for, for uh, 38 years. And if that's not enough, he picked up running as a healthy hobby and took off in the 200 meters at the pin relays, winning at the age of 76, and yes, returning for another run on Saturday at age 100. I guess it's really something that uh, you don't often hear about, and it seems like it would be somewhat novel if I can get out there and, and really perform. Their key to success was making a habit of doing everything together. Yes, everything. We bowled together, we ran together, we played together, we went to the, to the movies together. You can say they're blessed to be alive, but maybe it's better to say we're blessed to still have them. They're independent, have grandchildren, great-grandchildren, and great-great-grandchildren. Mrs. Wright just turned 98. What do you think about him running on Saturday? It's up to him. It's up to him. You just leave it to him? Yes, he wanted to do it. That's what he wanted to do. Our thanks to Anthony Johnson for that report. And before we go tonight, the image of the day, a young refugee from eastern Ukraine smiling as she walks on the arms of a group of traditionally dressed local children as they play Ukrainian children's games there in Lviv, a brief moment of joy during war. And that's our show for this hour. Stay tuned to ABC News Live for more context and analysis of the day's top stories. Thank you for streaming with us and have a great night. And coming up in the next hour, it was a terrible day for stocks. Just how low could things go? And the pandemic has been brutal for so many women on the job front, but the tide may slowly be starting to turn. We'll explain. Stay with us. America's number one news, ABC News. Most watched, most trusted, and streaming live to you anytime, anywhere, and free. This is ABC News Live, America's number one streaming news, free to you 24-7. Watch America's number one news whenever you want it, wherever you are, anytime. ABC News Live, streaming live and free on all platforms. More Americans choose ABC News, America's number one news source. 
Take America's number one news with you anywhere you go, anytime, free. Download the ABC News app now. Breaking news, exclusives, 24-7. There for you with one touch. The ABC News app. Download it now. The deeper you go into the black market, the darker it gets. Traffic, Wednesdays at 9 on National Geographic. He thought he was God. He's now one of the most vilified men in the world. He is the everyman. Zelensky is the Tom Hanks of Ukraine. The fact that a little nice Jewish boy is 5'7 is showing up this KGB agent in the Kremlin. What do you say to Americans who see Russia and you not only as a rival, but an unfriendly adversary? Two men at war. Which Vladimir will take over? The world is not going to be the same. Christopher Steele, the guy who picked a fight with two presidents, and he's lived to tell the tale. That now infamous dossier. Supposedly a tape showing prostitutes hired by Donald Trump urinating on a bed. It would be quite a tape if it in fact existed. I said take out the PP pee -pee tape. It quickly became a question of how much of this was accurate. This is the stuff of movies. A lot of this is the stuff of movies. The story of epic proportions. Phony stuff. It's a bunch of crap. It changed history. Good evening, I'm Trevor Alden for Lindsay Davis. Thanks for streaming with us. We're monitoring several developments here at ABC News at this hour. The family of slain cinematographer Helena Hutchins is very upset about the release of body camera footage showing the final moments of her life. This as the New Mexico sheriff tonight is now admitting his deputies made mistakes while on the scene of the Rust movie set. Extreme heat has been blamed for the deaths of millions of honeybees in the Atlanta area. About five million were being shipped from California to Alaska to be used for pollination. 200 crates were rerouted to Atlanta, but then they were left on the hot tarmac. The bees were supposed to be used to pollinate apple orchards, crops, and nurseries. And for millions of parents of children under five tonight, a potential timeline for the FDA's review of the Moderna and Pfizer vaccines. An advisory panel now planning to meet on June 8th, the 21st, and the 22nd, with authorization expected sometime that month. With COVID cases up 44% among children, many parents say they want a decision soon. And now, of course, to Ukraine and the news today of a former Marine's death there. William Joseph Cancel had gone to help in the fight against the Russians. Tonight, President Biden is lamenting that he leaves a son behind. Ian Panel has more from Keith. Tonight, a Pentagon plea to Russia to tamp down the nuclear saber rattling after threats from the Kremlin. We urge Russia uh, to stop uh, escalating the rhetoric uh, uh, with respect to nuclear weapons and do the right thing. Is end the war today. Kirby appearing to choke up as he talked about Vladimir Putin's atrocities in Ukraine. It's difficult to look at the... Sorry. It's difficult to look at some of the images and imagine that any well-thinking, serious, mature leader would do that. Russia's war has not gone to plan. Having failed to take the capital, Kyiv, a senior U.S. defense official assessing they're now having trouble with their offensive in the east and are behind schedule by at least several days, describing it as a potential knife fight. And tonight, the first American civilian fighting alongside Ukrainian troops has died. Former U.S. Marine Willie Joseph Cancel. His wife confirming his death to ABC News, saying in a statement, he went there wanting to help people. He had always felt that that was his main mission in life, adding, my husband was very brave and a hero. The 22-year-old had been working with a military contractor in Ukraine and was a full-time correction officer in Tennessee. He leaves behind his wife and young son. Tonight, new video of that missile strike on Kyiv late Thursday. Videos online showing the moment Russian missiles rained down, destroying a residential building, killing prominent Ukrainian journalist Vera Hirich. Seen here in a selfie video last month on the streets of Kyiv. These latest strikes coming just over an hour after President Zelensky met with United Nations Secretary General Antonio Guterres. Artem Chaus was in his apartment when the first missile struck. 
and saw the next attack incoming. Wow, so you saw two missiles come in. Yes. What that raketa let you see What that? I can't imagine how terrifying that must be. No, yes, yes. Like a man. In Mariupol, new attempts to rescue civilians trapped in that massive steel plant failing. We contacted the far-right Azov Battalion, who are fighting alongside government forces trapped in that besieged bunker with hundreds of civilians. ABC News couldn't verify this video's authenticity. Unable to speak to them directly, we sent questions about the conditions there. This place was not intended for a living. Residents trapped in the city for weeks, like 71-year-old Vitaly Kudasov, describe the hell of daily life. Было больно. It was a massacre, he says. Shells, rounds, scary things, but we endured. Victoria Nikolaeva says simply, it's like when they show you the last days of the planet. We were thinking, this is it. And Ian Panel joins us tonight once again from Kiev. And Ian, late today we heard from President Biden reacting to the death of that former U.S. Marine. What did he have to say? Yeah, that's right, Trevor. I mean, the president calling the death of American Willie Joseph cancel very sad. U.S. officials also doubling down tonight, urging Americans once again not to travel to the country as attacks by Russia in the east and the south of Ukraine start to ramp up. Trevor? Ian, Ian panel for us tonight. Thank you. Next, the governor of Oklahoma is expected to sign the second of two new anti-abortion laws, effectively ending nearly all abortions in that state. And this is the latest Republican-led state to impose strict limits, forcing women to travel out of state to seek services. ABC's Rachel Scott reports. Tonight, one of the most restrictive abortion bills in the nation, now on the desk of Oklahoma's governor, awaiting his signature. It bans abortion after six weeks, before many women even know they're pregnant. This will not save just one life. This will save many, many lives. It has been proven so in Texas. It will be so here in Oklahoma. It's modeled after that restrictive law in Texas, deputizing everyday citizens to file lawsuits against anyone they say aids or abets an abortion. The reward, at least $10,000. This bill is incredibly intrusive. It reduces individuals' freedoms. And it's just plain wrong. Since the Texas law passed, a surging number of women from that state have traveled to Oklahoma to get an abortion, a 2,500% increase, according to Planned Parenthood. But soon, Oklahoma won't be an option either. It joins a number of mostly southern states that recently imposed new restrictions on access to abortion, forcing women to travel even further to get the procedure. You're putting people in a terrible position where they have to choose between their job, caring for their children, and getting the health care that they need. But in Oklahoma, Republican lawmakers I spoke with unmoved. What is your message to women who say, this should be my choice? Who say they should have the decision, they should have the choice to decide what they want to do with their own health? I think there's unique DNA. I think it's a unique living human being in the womb. And so I believe that the decision over your health uh, is tremendous. The de decision on someone else's health, uh, I think, is different. The bill will go into effect immediately after the governor signs it, all but stopping abortions in the state. Then in August, an even tougher bill will go into effect, outlawing abortions entirely in Oklahoma, except to save the life of a woman in a medical emergency. That's Rachel Scott reporting. Well, the month of April has been a brutal one on Wall Street. Today, stocks had their biggest sell-off in almost two years. The Dow falling 939 points. That's an unnerving 2.8% drop. And with today's decline alone, the average American's 401k lost about $3,000. All of this is happening as inflation, rising interest rates, and global supply chain issues have some worried that a recession may be looming. Well, it's no secret the economic fallout of the pandemic has had a disproportionate impact on women, with millions losing their jobs or leaving them to take on all the added responsibilities at home. But experts say the tide is slowly turning. ABC's Ariel Reshev has the details. Raina Boston is a working mom with three children under six. 
Her husband is a healthcare professional. So like many women, when the pandemic hit in 2020, she says she knew she had to make a major career sacrifice. So at the start of the pandemic, we had two kids and my husband has no way of working from home. And so that means it fell to me to do a lot of the picking up. Raina making the difficult decision to forfeit her new promotion in her HR job, instead taking a demotion, scaling back in order to put family first. I just knew that I needed to be able to take a step back career wise. And she's far from alone. Between February 2020 and April 2020, over 3.6 million women exited the labor force, meaning they were no longer working or looking for work. There are still 872,000 fewer women in the labor force now than in February 2020. Some calling it the she session. Many women had to rethink the role of career in their life, which honestly is sad because for many years now, we've been talking about making sure that we can achieve gender equity, that we can achieve a pay equality, insert a pandemic that basically pressed pause on so much of the progress we've made. Tara J. Frank is an equity strategist and author of the book, The Waymakers. Women were taking on a lot of the work at home. They also took on more of the homeschooling responsibilities. And Tara says the impact even greater for some. Uh, women in senior roles, women who have children uh, under 10, single mothers obviously have been really impacted by the pandemic and black women have been especially impacted by the pandemic. There are 1.1 million fewer women in jobs since February 2020, but experts say there is hope. 431,000 jobs were added in March of 2022, women making up 62.9% of them. And with more companies now recruiting women and changing work culture, experts tell us women may have more leverage to negotiate and find a balance. This is a wonderful moment for women to redefine the rules. Raina says despite the challenges of the past two years, there have been silver linings too. I am in much greater alignment with my values and what I actually want to be doing in my career as opposed to just mindlessly climbing a career ladder. That's Ariel Reshef reporting. If you're looking for a house to rent, almost everyone these days turns to the internet. But are some of those listings too good to be true? Experts say with a competitive housing market, home rental scams are on the rise. ABC's Becky Worley has more on what to watch out for. I was very upset, obviously. Finding a place to live can be stressful, even more so when you find out you've been scammed. Ashley Rourke of Berkeley, Michigan, talking to her affiliate WXYZ, telling them she lost $930 trying to rent this house. Full first month's rent, security deposit. She responded to an online listing, and she didn't suspect anything suspicious. People were quick to respond. The photos were all really nice. She says she drove by the home and talked on the phone with someone claiming to be a lawyer representing the owner. According to Ashley, he then put the pressure on, saying he had to go out of town soon, so he needed the first month's rent and security deposit to be sent quickly, all to get the paperwork and keys. Ten minutes after I was supposed to meet the person, they blocked my phone number. Experts say scammers often advertise rentals that don't exist or aren't actually available, all to trick people into transferring money to them. The housing market is still kind of crazy right now, so we're getting even more reports of, you know, I saw this property on online, it looked fascinating, but when I go, went to go check it out, it either didn't exist or there were some other circumstance that really raised a lot of red flags. And the Better Business Bureau points out red flags. Signs of a scam? The person asks for money before you see the house or sign a lease. They won't meet you in person. Or they say you can't see the inside of the house. Our thanks to Becky. And still to come, another powerful blast in Afghanistan on the last day of Ramadan. Is that nation spiraling? And it's a broad question, but how do you act like things are okay when things are not okay. We're gonna talk about it. Stay with us. It was a scary time. In the 70s, you had multiple bodies showing up in Los Angeles. There were so many murders happening. You had to have a name for it, serial killer. There was a human head in there. This was premeditated evil. 
We have this clock. This person is going to do this again. It's me against the killer. Who's going to win? We'll see who laughs last. Pat. What came next was unlike anything they had ever seen. America's number one news, ABC News. Most watched, most trusted, and streaming live to you anytime, anywhere, and free. This is ABC News Live, America's number one streaming news, free to you 24-7. Watch America's number one news whenever you want it, wherever you are, anytime. ABC News Live, streaming live and free on all platforms. National parks are incredibly safe places, but crime will happen. My wife had fallen in really critical condition. At that time, I thought it was just a tragic accident. There's still a lot of questions we need to ask. There were small things that didn't totally add up. This is two lives for Harold that have died now. I was shocked. Something's not right. Now streaming on ABC News Live 2020. True crime, cinematic, real life drama, stunning, the unthinkable. Follow the clues, the hunt, true crime 2020. Now streaming on ABC News Live. Take America's number one news with you anywhere you go, anytime, free. Download the ABC News app now. Breaking news, exclusives, 24-7. There for you with one touch. The ABC News app. Download it now. We're tracking several headlines around the world. Yet another powerful blast claims lives in Afghanistan, this time at a mosque in Kabul on the last Friday of the holy month of Ramadan. Hundreds were inside at the time and at least 10 were killed. It's the latest in a string of deadly bomb attacks in that country in recent weeks. The premier of the British Virgin Islands was arrested at the Miami airport over charges of alleged money laundering and conspiracy to import cocaine. The DEA complaint said the premier had agreed to allow an informant who was posing as a member of Mexico's Sinaloa drug cartel to use British Virgin Islands ports to ship cocaine in return for a payment of $500,000. According to Reuters, the premier could not immediately be reached for comment. And cheers to the Festival of Beers. Munich's annual Oktoberfest, the world's largest beer festival, will take place this year without any coronavirus restrictions after it was canceled the past two years. The mayor said if pandemic measures are reinstated, the decision could change, but they're hoping that people are able to come, they're able to stay healthy, and that the only regret of their visit is because of needing headache meds the next day. Well, as we mentioned, we are entering the last few days of Ramadan. It's the holiest month in Islam. Across the globe, Muslims have been fasting daily, and it all comes to an end soon with a holiday called Eid. ABC's Zoreen Shah has more on the celebration. It's the holiest month of the year for over a billion Muslims honoring Ramadan. They fast daily from dawn until dusk, one of the five pillars of Islam, done to build spiritual discipline. Ramadan isn't just fasting in the sense that you're fasting from food and drinking. It's fasting from anything that isn't helping you be a better person. In these viral TikToks, NYU student Rida Ali shares what a day of Ramadan is like, balancing college life with daily prayer and activities. Some people's version of being a better person during Ramadan is just being a better friend, being a better daughter, being a better you know family member, while another person's version is you know giving more charity. With Eid days away, many eager to dress up to celebrate. Everyone's just so excited to be gathering together and looking good and feeling good. Which is why stores like Kaino are now seeing even higher demand. The whole spectrum is available, the whole rainbow. Just choose your, choose your adventure. Then when the sun sets for the day, it's all about breaking that fast together, enjoying food and community into the night and it can be for a good cause. Everyone's welcome to come here, and most importantly, charity. So our organization donates everything at the end of the month to local charities. In celebration of this holiest of months, Hassan Shami started the Ramadan Sahur Festival, a massive overnight festival of food. It is 1.30 in the morning here, and this place is packed. This is the largest Ramadan festival in the country, and they are expecting over 25,000 people here tonight. And what are they here for? Food. 
People from Detroit to all across the country attend, some waiting nearly an hour for their favorite foods, like tornado potatoes. Yes, in pure Lebanese fashion, a spiralized potato. I've never spiralized a potato before, but I think I've been pretty good. It's then dunked in hot oil mixed with Mexican spices. But it's the people that make the month truly special. This is our community, man. This is what our community does. We get together, we support each other. In classic Ramadan spirit, Arab-American comedian Amr Zahar spontaneously joining in on our fun to make us try this kanafe, a traditional Palestinian dessert. Mm. Okay. I need three more. I need five more. In our culture, this means we're getting married. <laughs> Our thanks to Zori and Shah. Well, the last two years have led to a roller coaster of emotions. We're talking about concern, anxiety, burnout. And while many of us were cooped up at home, we were possibly wondering, how do we navigate all of it? Our well, Stephanie Ramos sat down with author Molly West Duffy to discuss her new book. It's called Big Feelings, How to Be Okay When Things Are Not Okay. Molly, big feelings are certainly something many have been dealing with now more than ever as we see terms like pandemic anxiety, Zoom fatigue, and COVID burnout. In this book, you look to address this overwhelming cycle of emotions that so many find themselves caught up in, especially during these days. How does someone go about taking those first steps forward? The first step is about sitting with the emotion. So even though we've been taught that some of these emotions are bad, so we feel like it's bad to feel anger, regret, comparison, they may be uncomfortable, but there are still things that we can learn from them. They're not necessarily good or bad. And when we suppress them or ignore them, we don't get to learn from them. So for example, with anger, anger can be a sign that we're actually afraid of something or that something that we care about has been violated. Violated, and that gives us information for what to do next. So rather than you know suppressing them or acting right away, we have to sit with them and understand what is that deeper need. Talk a little bit about the seven universal feelings. What are those feelings? The seven emotions that we cover in the book are uncertainty, burnout, despair, anger, regret, perfectionism, and comparison. And the reason we talk about those emotions is those emotions are very prevalent in our modern world due to technology, the pandemic, the state of our workplace, our families, all of these things. And they can feel overwhelming. Many, many people have gone through these emotions and yet we don't talk about them very much. And so we can feel really alone and isolated in them. So we wrote this book to talk about what these emotions are, what you can learn from them, how you can move through them, and most importantly, so that you don't feel alone in feeling them. And Molly, in the book, you talk about your, your own experience with burnout. Uh, based on your research and the experts that you've spoken to, how do you combat that? I, like You want to do your best at work, you want to do uh, your best for your family, but when you're feeling burnt, burnt out, how do you fix it? A big step is in preventing burnout. And the reason that burnout is actually so pernicious is that it affects our own sense of judgment. So when we are dealing with burnout, we are running on adrenaline and we can actually feel good. We're like getting things done, we're moving quickly. And then suddenly that adrenaline runs out and we hit a wall and it can take weeks or even months to recover from that burnout. So recognizing those early warning signs and then drawing your own boundaries. And this is one of the secrets of adulthood is that no one is going to draw your own lines for you. You have to draw them. And so it can be helpful to set rules. I'm not going to do work after a certain hour, or I'm not going to schedule back-to-back -back meetings for myself. This is a practice that we have to keep working on. It's not a one and done. We also have an assessment on our website where you can go and look at the type of burnout you're experiencing. So there's actually, the research shows there's actually three types of burnout. The one that we think about most often Often is exhaustion, but there's also um, a feeling of cynicism and a feeling of ineffectiveness. And so figuring out which one or all three of those you're feeling can be helpful. I'm going to check out that site and take that test and see, see where, where I am on that. Um, you and your co-author, Liz, uh, filled the book with illustrations that help communicate these complex feelings you both write about. How can creativity help in dealing with 
our emotions. I love Liz's illustrations. I think they do such a good job in communicating things that are hard to verbalize. They visualize things in a very simple way that cuts across languages and cultural backgrounds. I think for Liz, it's a really big creative outlet to deal with some of these emotions. And I think for those reading the book, some of the, the illustrations will resonate maybe more than if they were just reading about what we have on the page. Fantastic. Well, Molly, thank you so much for your time and for sharing with us. We appreciate it. Thank you for having me. That's Stephanie Ramos reporting. And still to come here on Prime, how one teen living with autism found his voice at the baseball diamond. Right now, with so much at stake, Sunday mornings, this is the place. Taking on all the tough questions, straightforward reporting, no spin, no hype, no bull. Thank you for making ABC's This Week with George Stephanopoulos the number one Sunday morning news show versus the competition. Welcome to This Week. Take America's number one news with you anywhere you go, anytime, free. Download the ABC News app now. Breaking news, exclusives, 24 Seven. There for you with one touch. The ABC News app. Download it now. The most powerful stories of our time, anytime. Nightline. Ready for a little GMA ish promo? Okay, here we go. GMA 7A every day with Robin, George, and Michael. That's how you start the day. Boom! America's number one news, ABC News. Most watched, most trusted, and streaming live to you anytime, anywhere, and free. This is ABC News Live, America's number one streaming news, free to you 24-7. Watch America's number one news whenever you want it, wherever you are, anytime. ABC News Live, streaming live and free on all platforms. You know, when you head to the Diamond to take in a ball game, it is not just about the sights, it's not just about the taste with the Cracker Jacks. The sounds are a big part of what make it a classic experience. And one Texas teen diagnosed with autism found his voice by becoming the voice of his high school softball team. Jeff Jones with our partner KVUE takes us into the press box to meet Benji in tonight's local lowdown. Every ballpark has sounds calling for our attention. How are you? Good, how are you doing? But at Hendricks and Softball Games, the sound that calls the loudest is the voice calling the game. Tonight is a very special night at the nest. Benji, he's an awesome person in general. Benji is a light to everyone. He's a, uh, an absolute <laughs> magnet for, you know, charisma and everything, and people just love him. They really, really do. Our last senior is McKenna Robertson. My name is Benji Garcia, and my job here at Hendrickson High School is announcing softball games. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the nest. What I love most about game days is that I love to uh, say, up oh, next and say their name. Up next for your Hendrickson Hawks, number nine, Avery Howe. He was called to action by the team. They're like, do you think he'd want to announce? And when we brought that to him, he was like, are you serious? Knowing a disability would not get in his way. I have autism and it impacts me by uh, sometimes being afraid to talk to people sometimes. All righty. Yeah. That, was all, that was all three outs. His disability does not hinder him, and you can just tell the more he does it, the more confidence he gains, the more unique, and his personality comes out. The visiting Conley Cougars and your Hendrickson Hawks. The perfect personality for a sports fan. One of the final lessons Benji's dad, Joey, was able to teach. Before he passed away from colon cancer, he he, uh, I, he watched a lot of sports, and he, I started to get into sports when I was in sixth grade. When the games were on, he knew that Dad would be there, and he would, he would sit and they would watch games together. I think that was a way for him to kind of maintain the same interests as his dad had. And if Benji's dad were here today, he would be saying, "He would be saying, that's my boy, and the, that's my boy. I'm so proud of you, son." 
proud of his personality, proud of his job, and definitely proud of his growth. Here we go. Benji's parents were told that he might be nonverbal. Whenever I was a kid, I would be afraid to talk to people, and I would talk to nobody, and I would just be shy and look down. I think because of how hard he had to work at communication, he's really good at it. At this time, would you please remove your hats and stand for the singing of the national anthem? But now that I come to think of it, I've came a long way. Watch him now, like, be here and, is, you know, announce to the softball fields. It, it's, it's his passion. He's found his voice. Play ball! A passion, a voice. They both contribute to the calling of the guy calling the game, setting an example for other sports fans with special needs. If they're ever shy, don't be afraid to talk to people. Just, it doesn't hurt to ask questions. Anna? Uh, Anaya Gordon. Somebody who's at Park Crest Middle School or Brook Hollow Elementary School, they might have a path that is, you know, opening up a little more doors because of Benji. Number 22, Miranda Lay. This is his calling, and this is just exactly where he's supposed to be. The final score for the Hendrickson Hawks, Hendrickson 13, Conley 1. Kid is a natural, too. We love that from Benji. And thanks to Jeff Jones from KVU for that report. That is our show for tonight. Stay tuned to ABC News Live for more context and analysis of the day's top stories. I'm Trevor Alt. Thanks for streaming with us. Have a great weekend.